It's music theory online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with music theory online. Hi, everyone, and welcome to Junior Theory Module 11. In this module, we'll be talking about slurs and phrases and how phrases mark the cadence points. A slur or a phrase mark is a curved line that's placed above or below notes. The slurs or phrase marks indicate that you should play legato. Phrases can also indicate musical sentences. In other words, the notes under the phrase are smooth. At the end of the phrase, there's a little break in the music, similar to the ending of a sentence. Slurs are drawn from note head to note head but make sure they never touch the note head. As a general rule, if the last note has a stem in the other direction, the slur will be close but not touch the end of the stem. Keep slurs away from other symbols and you'll always want to extend the slur to the second note of the tie. In this example, we have a phrase in the treble clef that extends over a number of measures. Notice how the phrase is written above the tied notes and although within the phrase the stems have different directions, the phrases don't change and it's very clear. In the bass clef, the phrase begins with the stems going up and ends with the stems going down. However, the phrase is always very clear. We frequently have cadences at the end of phrases. You can often find where to add a cadence by looking at the end of a two or a four measure phrase. Let's look at this first phrase. How do we know that a plago four to one cadence will fit here? First, we need to see which chords contain the given notes. The first step is to determine the key of the passage. In this case, it's in the key of C major. Next, Let's figure out what cadential chord has a C. The C major chord has C, E, G, doesn't it? That would be a one chord in C major, which is a note we need for the cadence. That was easy. The F, which is the note before the C, is a little more challenging. Let's try an F, A, C chord. What Roman numeral chord would that be in C major? It's a four chord, so we have the chord progression four to one, which is a plagal cadence. If we were writing the complete cadence with the treble clef, we would need to add an F, A, and C to complete the four chord, and a C, E, G to complete the one chord. It doesn't matter what order you write the notes of the chords in the treble clef, it won't change that it's a four to one chord. Now let's look at the last cadence. Of course the last chord has the notes C, E, and G. The root of the chord is C, which is a one chord in C major. The half note G is the root of the G, B, D chord, which is a five chord in C major. So our final cadence is a perfect cadence in C major. Here are some more cadences for us to label. Let's begin by finding the key of this example. The key is G minor. How do we know it's G minor and not B flat major? First, because there's an F sharp, which is the raised leading note. Secondly, we know it's in G minor because it looks like it ends with a G minor chord, which is a one chord in the key of G minor. Since we've discovered that the last chord is a G minor chord, we'll start here. Under that chord, you would write a Roman numeral 1. I'll give you a second to name the chord in front of the G minor chord. It's a C minor chord, which is a 4 chord in the key of G minor. Both the 1 chord and the 4 chord are minor chords, so you would use the lower case Roman numerals. What type of cadence does that make? A plagal cadence. Here's what that first phrase sounds like. Mm -hmm. 
We've solved one of the cadences and we have one more to go. Why don't you pause this module so you can solve this cadence before we do it together? Let's see if you solved this correctly. The dotted half note chord is G minor, right? That's a one chord. The chord before it is a D major chord, which is a five chord in G minor. That makes this a perfect cadence. Let me play the entire passage for you. Because this is in a minor key, the 1 and the 4 chords are written in lowercase Roman numerals. Here's another musical passage where we are going to find the key, write the correct Roman numerals under the chords, and identify the cadences. Why don't you pause this module and answer all of the questions? If you still need help, just follow along with me. The first thing we need to do is find the key. Look at the G-sharps that are written as accidentals. That's the raised leading note in A minor. And we know A minor is C major's relative. So we know we're in the key of A minor. Let's start with the first cadence in this passage. The first chord has an E G-sharp B, which is an E major chord. In A minor, we have an E major chord on the dominant, so this is a 5 chord. Remember the 5 chord in a minor key is always a major chord because the third of the chord is the leading note which is raised. The next chord has A, C, and E, which is an A minor chord. This is a 1 chord in A minor. We would write this with a lowercase Roman numeral, one because it's a minor chord. Our first cadence is a five to one cadence which is perfect. The last cadence ends with an A minor chord which is a one chord in A minor. The chord before that is an E major chord which is a five chord in A minor. This cadence is also a perfect cadence. Notice how the A minor chords are written differently in each cadence. They're still root position chords even though the voicing in the treble clef is different. Here's what the passage sounds like. For this example, we need to identify the key, find the phrases, find the cadence points, and label and name the cadence. Let's begin by finding the key. When you know the key, it helps to find those cadence points. The key of this passage is G major. In addition to using the key signature to identify the key, you'll notice how much of the music is G centered. Now we need to find the phrases. First off, the passage will probably be divided roughly in half. We also need to find a cadence at the end of each phrase. If your phrases are incorrect, you won't be able to find and identify a cadence point. Our first phrase ends here. Let's see what type of cadence we have at the end of this phrase. The final chord in the phrase is a G major chord, which is 1 in G major. That works well towards having a cadence. The chord before it is a D major chord, which is 5 in G major. So our two chords are 5 to 1, which is a perfect cadence. Hooray! Our second phrase will take us to the end of this passage. Let's hope the cadences work out for us. The final chord is a G major chord, which is a 1 chord. The chord before that is a D major chord, which is a 5 chord. This phrase also ends with a 5 to 1 cadence. Have you noticed that our examples have more perfect cadences than plagal cadences? That's because the perfect cadence is more frequently used. You will still need to go through the process of identifying cadences, 
but don't be surprised if both cadences are perfect, like in this example. Now you've learned how to identify cadences and phrases. Work hard on your assignments because that's when you really begin to understand everything we're covering in these modules. I look forward to seeing you at Theory Club and remember I'm here to help you every step of the way. Have a super duper week. Bye. It's Music Theory Online. Let's learn some theory online by watching modules online with Music Theory online.